Welcome to this step-by-step -step atmospheric abstract watercolour seascape tutorial using just one brush and a plastic card. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to see more tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get updates of my latest tutorials. So, shall we get started? This is the gorgeous reference photograph that I used to inspire me to paint this abstract watercolour and you can find a link for the photo in the description below along with a list of materials, colour list and alternative colours as well and if you'd like to purchase any of them there are also Amazon links and Jackson's Art Supplies. I'm actually painting on Saunders Waterford rough paper, 300 grams. It's nine by 12 inches and it's on a block. So it stops all that buckling and warping of the watercolor paper when you are working wet in wet. I'm using Schmincke Super Granulating Deep Sea Green with a little bit of the Schmincke Super Granulating Tundra Blue. You can use instead some Cerulean and Ultramarine. At the top here, I'm using Tundra Violet, but if you don't have Tundra Violet, you can use Payne's Grey or Indigo. So I'm working wet in wet here, tilting my watercolour paper and I'm just sort of painting these clouds in, leaving gaps. So you're getting these lovely atmospheric sky, working wet in wet. And the brush that I'm using is the silver brush, black velvet brush, size 10 round brush. It's a brilliant brush. And I put some washi tape around the edge so I'll get a nice white border later. I'm using my spritzer bottle just to get the paint moving. And I actually did originally wet the surface of the watercolor paint with my spritzer bottle as well. So I'm using a plastic knife here, palette knife. It's a really cheapy little plastic knife. It came in a set for under two pounds and I'm just painting this wet into wet where the rocks are. So I've wet this area of the rocks here and I'm using some M. Graham quinacridone rust, which I love, but you can use burnt sienna. And I've mixed that up with a little bit of the tundra violet and a little bit of the M. Graham turquoise, but you can use just a little bit of Payne's gray and perhaps a little bit of Prussian blue. And I'm using the tip of the knife to scratch in and sculpt these rocks. The paint is quite creamy and it's quite a wet surface. And I'm literally putting paint straight from the tube. I'm not using pans. I've actually squeezed the paint out into these pans here. You could try to do this technique with pans, but it's a little bit tricky because you kind of need creamy paint. What I'm doing now is just getting everything moving, creating atmospheric effects. I'm spritzing now all of this dark paint to try and get some happy accidents, some interesting effects to create some nice abstract or semi-abstract work. I'm tilting to the side here as well. You may want some old rags on standby to collect all this paint here. But I love a bit of spritzing and tilting. You never know quite what you're going to get and it's just so much fun to do. So I'm painting wet and wet in my foreground there. I'm actually using yellow ochre, painting wet into wet and I've dropped a little bit of the tundra violet in there as well. I'm using light brown brusho and I'm sort of sprinkling this on the wet surface. And for those of you that not heard or would like to try some brusho, I will put a link in the description below of a video I made all about brusho, which I hope you'll find useful and helpful. So I'm painting now the middle ground rocks to the right here using the quinacridone rust again you can use the burnt sienna and I've mixed it with a little bit of black um, you can use Payne's grey as well I'm still using my size 10 brush I'm painting damp into damp so it, again it's quite creamy paint onto a damp surface so on a damp surface you get nice fuzzy edges just make sure that your paint is the same consistency as that damp surface it's not wetter but mind you, you might get some really nice atmospheric effects and back runs. I don't have any problem with that. I think they're wonderful. It's just knowing what will happen. So wet paint onto a damp surface will cause blooms, cauliflowers and back runs. So I'm just putting in this creamy dark paint with my size 10 brush. And I'm also using a bit of the rust here in the foreground, creating a little bit of perspective lines there. So they're parallel lines that appear to meet 
on the horizon so they're sort of merging together so it creates a bit of depth in your painting so I'm adding the same colours the quinacridone rust and the black but you could use Payne's grey or indigo I'm sprinkling on some sea salt onto the foreground there at the with the beaches onto the damp surface and I'm hoping that will create some light texture so I'm going to let that dry naturally. Meanwhile, um, the damp paint that I've applied to the rocks and in the foreground there, the quinacridone rust and the Payne's grey or black, I'm going to sort of lift off now with my card. For a bonus for my Patreon members, I've actually included a little section about how to use the card, lots of different ways. I've also included a tonal chart and also colour charts. And the big bonus is I've actually painted this painting three times on rough paper, which is what you're watching now, but also on cold pressed and a hot press. I get lots of questions from subscribers and members about the difference with the textures of the paper. I thought, what better idea than to paint the same picture three times and then you can judge for yourselves. And also I will discuss the benefits and what I found the best as well. And at the end of this tutorial, you will actually see those finished paintings as well. If you are interested in the Patreon membership, details about that can be found in the top right hand corner of this video or in the description below. And please don't hesitate to ask me any questions. As you saw there, I've been spritzing, I'm lifting off with my palette knife here, my plastic palette knife to create some lots of yummy atmospheric textures and details. I thought the um, hills here, the rocks here on the left hand side looked a little bit pale after that spritzing off. So I'm just adding a little bit more paint now with my size 10 brush, damp into damp, using the quinacridone rust, but you could use burnt sienna and I'm gonna add a little bit of black, but you could use Payne's gray. I'm using a pale wash of the Schmincke Deep Sea Green colour, but you could use some cerulean if you don't have that colour. And I'm just using, I'm still using my size 10 brush, sort of really sort of painting these distant land here. And as you can see on the right hand side, the, the paint's quite sort of almost a dry brush effect. So some parts of my painting are drying, but just make sure you don't introduce too much liquid into your painting.
I've painted some M. Graham's turquoise there, but you can use you could use phthalo turquoise, some ultramarine, and a little bit more of the turquoise in the foreground there. I'm working wet into wet, but I thought just to kind of pale everything as it goes into the foreground, I'm just using my spritzer bottle to dilute this paint to pale it away. I'm adding a little bit more creamier turquoise here just to create a little bit more dark on the left hand side and on the right hand side just trying to get my composition a little bit of balance there using my size 10 brush working damp into damp. I've turned my painting sideways and I'm lifting off these rocks now with the plastic card. The paint is damp, it's not too wet. If it's too wet this won't work as well and try not to overdo it. Remember in watercolour, less is more. I'm just painting some details now in the foreground, working, you can work wet on dry or damp into damp here, whatever's happening with your painting and whatever you feel comfortable doing. And I'm creating some textures and details using the card, using my brush and with a very dark brown. So it's the quinacridone rust and you could use black or Payne's grey. It's just to give a little bit of information here. You don't want to give too much details. So I'm actually using some Schmenke gouache white titanium paint. You can use white watercolour. It's not as opaque. So you might need to do a sort of like a double layer of it to build up. And I'm just working wet on dry now with the size 10 brush. I've slightly diluted the gouache and I'm just sort of painting very quick strokes there to create a little bit of sparkle, but also where the white surface sort of hitting the rocks gently here and there. I've watered down the paint a little bit more and I'm spattering again with my size 10 brush, really tapping the brush very firmly. You may want to mask out your sky with some paper towel because you might have lots of white blobs in the sky. I've had lots of practice, but as you can see, it's all over the back of my hand. So make sure you protect things that are around you. I'm painting a little bit of shadow colour in the foreground just to sort of bring everything together now. And it's actually a very sort of dilute rock colour. And that was the quinacridone rust and the black. So really dilute that down. This is a good little test. I'm actually painting these birds with my size 10 brush, just trying to get a real point with this brush. If you do find this tricky, do swap to a smaller brush, but I'm just varying the size and the angles of these birds here using a little bit of the tundra blue, but you could use ultramarine with a touch of Payne's gray or a bit of burnt sienna, just like a gray blue color. I've gone mad with the spattering and the white paint there, but I really feel I wanted to get those waves crashing up against the rocks, creating a little bit more drama and finished off with a dark spatter um, in the foreground on the sandy area. 
I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it inspires you to have a go at this wonderful photograph, keeping things really simple, even the colour palette really simple, creating this atmospheric abstract seascape tutorial. So this is a sneak peek at my hot press painting that I did. So using the same um, reference photograph, similar colours, similar techniques, and this is the cold press version. It's a slightly larger picture as well. Um, quite enjoyed doing this one on this paper. But for those of you on Patreon, check out which one was my favourite and how I got on with each of the different surfaces. And also how to use the plastic card to paint and form rocks in watercolour. And that tutorial will be available to the Patreons on the 11th of June. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. You know, using all the card techniques, the brush show, the salt, the spattering, the spritzing, you name it, it was all packed full of all these yummy techniques to create this atmospheric semi-abstract or abstract seascape tutorial in watercolour. If you have any questions about this tutorial please put them in the comments section below and again don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates of my latest tutorials and if you'd like to see the tutorials that are available on the Patreon membership check out my website. Thank you again for watching, happy painting, bye for now.